The purpose of this presentation this afternoon is to go over the thinking processes of the teacher when planning and preparing for their students. Specifically, they will be focused on science, a ninth grade biology classroom. Um, the topic is food change or interdependence of life. So we'll, we'll go through several components or several things that the teacher should consider when planning and preparing a lesson for their students in this ninth grade biology class. And so we'll focus on this acronym, STARTS, which is students, time pacing, assessments, resources, teaching pedagogy, and also standards. So these are the things or the components or the factors that a teacher should consider when planning and preparing a lesson for their students. First, we'll start with the students. The first part of this acronym is the students, and we'll start with them. When considering our students, we want to take a look. We know that the foundation for any of our disciplines is literacy, comprehending, word recognition, critical thinking. So we'll start with our Lexile scores of our students. This chart illustrates where the students should be by grade band in terms of their Lexile performance. So we're, we, we're focusing on a ninth grade biology class, so we're gonna look at their eighth grade Lexile scores. So we take a look at the lower limit of a Lexile performance. Those students at eighth grade will be at an 805 at the lower limit and at 1100 at the higher limit. And if we take into consideration Common Core, the lower limit will be 1010, and the higher limit will be 1185. A student that is on track will be performing at about a 1070, and a commendable student will be performing at 1265. So that, those are eighth grade scores. So if we take a, look, a closer look at our district data from 2013, we see that 38% of our students have Lexile scores that are less than 975 or the grade seven level. So considering this is a ninth grade biology class, we want our students to perform at between 1000 and 1075 on their eighth grade CRCT. So we want them at the eighth grade six month, we want them to exit at 1075 Lexile. So th that's our target for this, this group of students that I'm about to introduce to you in just a few moments. So th this is a class of 30 ninth grade biology students. And so the, the individuals or the students that you see highlighted in red are those students that, that are performing at two or more grade levels below their actual, the target reading performance. So we've highlighted here their eighth grade CRCT score as well as their Lexile score associated with that reading CRCT score. So if we take example one, Jeremy S, his eighth grade CRCT score in reading was 745. The connected Lexile score was 850, which means he's reading at a, at a fifth grade level, two or more grade levels below where he should be. And we take a look at Emily P. She's performing at a 740 in terms of her reading CRCT score, which means she's also reading at a fifth grade level. However, we have students that are performing above or where they should be, Susan P, 860 reading score, 1050, which means she's performing close to that 1075 mark we want to see at eighth grade, six month. Here's our second set of students, 10 students. We see John R at the top, 840 reading score, which correlates to a 1030 Lexile score. But how we see Ebony L, which has a 730 reading score, and then an 830 Lexile score, which she's performing at a fifth grade level. So you see, we have a wide spectrum of student performance on our reading CRCT, as well as a spectrum of uh, Lexile scores that we have to consider when teaching these students. Our last group of students, again, Tyra B, 720 on the reading score, 750, which means she's reading at a fourth grade level. So just in this class, we have reading levels that span from fourth grade all the way to eighth grade reading levels. Then we have uh, 860 for Shaniqua W. She has a leg scout of 1050, which means she's close to that eighth grade target of eighth grade six month or 1050 leg style score. We also wanted to consider the seventh grade CRCT scores. And the reason why we focused on seventh grade was because seventh grade parallels what the students learn in a ninth grade biology class. The specific domain that we wanted to focus on in seventh grade was interdependence of life. Interdependence of life deals with ecosystems, food chains, food webs, and how organisms gain energy from one another. So this is why we want to focus on this domain and to the seventh grade life science score, which is connected to high school biology. So we take a look at their content scores in science. Jeremy S, 
scored a 750, which and then on the specific domain, got 10, 15 out of 30 questions correct in the interdependence of life domain. And the pre-assessment that the teacher administered, he received a 50. We take a look at Chris R., who was a, received an 810 on the CRCT, and then, but he got 20 out of 30 questions right on the interdependence of domain, interdependence of life domain, and then 75 on the pretest. We take a look at the next group of students. Um, again, we visit uh, RGG, who, was, who received an 820 on the CRCT, 24 out of 30 on the, on the interdependence of life domain, and then an 85 on the pretest administered in the high school biology class. We take a look at another student, uh, Sean W., scored 750 on the seventh grade life science CRCT, got 12 out of 30 questions right on the interdependence of life domain and a 65 on the pretest score. So you can see from this data, the highlighted students again are those students who had low performance on the Lexile scores, but they also resulted in low performance on the CRCT domain, which, which we conclude from this data that the students life science score or grade on the science portion of the CRCT can be correlated to their reading score or Lexile performance. So just to summarize our data, on uh, the science content, 11 students scored below 800 on the 7th grade CRCT. We had 14 students who scored 70 or below on the pretest that was administered for this high school biology class. And 16 students scored 20, answered 20 or fewer items correct on the 7th grade interdependence of life domain. In regards to reading, we had two students with Lexile scores between 700 and 775, which is a fourth grade reading level. We have nine students that with Lexile scores between 800 and 875, which correlate to a fifth grade reading level. Three students between 900 and 975, between a sixth and seventh grade reading level. And then finally, we have 16 students reading between 1000 and 1075, which correlates to a seventh or latter part of eighth grade reading level on the Lexile performance. So now that we've considered our students, now we want to move on to the time and pacing of this lesson and also what standards we want to consider. We know the standards um, because we're talking about food chains, interdependence of life, but we want to pay special attention here to the time and pacing of this particular lesson. This is the standard as is written in terms of the high school uh, biology class. As before, students will assess the dependence of organisms on one another and the flow of energy and, the, and matter within their ecosystems. SB4B states explain the flow of matter and energy through ecosystems by arranging components of a food chain according to energy flow. So for this particular lesson, we're going to focus in on this particular element and specifically how students arrange organisms or the components of a food chain based upon the energy flow. The learning target reworded or rephrased in student-friendly language states, identify the organisms in a food chain as a producer, consumer, decomposer, carnivore, omnivore, or herbivore. So we want students to take a look at a food chain and be able to label these components when they look at the food chain. And we also want students to be able to take organisms at random and then arrange them in the proper order in terms of that food chain while also labeling the primary consumer, secondary consumer, tertiary consumer, and quaternary consumer uh, in that food chain. So taking a look at the timing and pacing for this particular lesson, we stated that we want to take a look just at food chains for this particular lesson, but we also want to expose stud students to the associated level text for their appropriate reading level. We've identified the Lexile scores for the students, so as we introduce food chains to these students, we want to introduce the appropriate level text for those students' reading levels so they'll have access to the concepts and access to the curriculum. The second part of this lesson, after you've gone through the explicit instruction model with segment one, we want to also visit food webs. The second segment of, of this lesson, which will deal with food webs, also utilizing the appropriate text for students to access the concepts. And then lastly, we, finally and ultimately, we want students to be able to construct and interpret energy pyramids, how that energy flows in an ecosystem from one organism to another. 
But our basic foundation starts here with food chains and also the appropriate text. So we've segmented this lesson so that it makes sense to students and is the appropriate amount of information based upon the readiness levels of the students in our classroom. So why is this important for students? The significance of this lesson. Energy, everything in the world requires energy. And as humans, what we want to communicate to our students that humans require energy, we consume plants and animals to obtain our energy. And because every animal does this, this is organized, this energy from one organism to another is organized into food chains. And a food chain basically tracks how energy is passed from one organism to the next. And so the, the food chain diagram illustrates how this happens from one organism to the, another, how this energy is passed from one organism to the next. The third component that we want to consider are the assessments. So what is the acceptable evidence to demonstrate that these students have mastered this information? And we want, we want to consider this before we actually execute our instructional activities. How will students demonstrate mastery? So by the end of this lesson, which correlates to our learning targets, we want students to identify these components of the food chain again. Merely the producer, consumer, decomposer, herbivore, carnivore, omnivore, and along with identifying these other additional components of just the food chain. As you can see, this is a wealth of terminology. Just in constructing the food chain, students have to be familiar with all of these terms in constructing and interpreting the food chain. This is an example of a food chain in terms of our assessment, what students will be required to do, identify the producer, primary consumer, secondary consumer, tertiary consumer, decomposers, as well as the carnivores and the herbivores in this diagram as well. So there are some additional components that are not included here that the students will be asked to do. Another component that we want to consider when preparing and planning for our students are the resources. We've, we've noted that there are several students in our class that are reading way below grade level, two or more grade levels before where, where they should be in terms of their reading performance. So we want to consider the resources that these students um, should have access to in order to interpret the information that's being presented to them. In this example, we see some sample text um, that the students could be exposed to in order to receive the same content that other students who are performing on grade level could be exposed to as well. For example, the, the book entitled Food Chains in You has an 860 Lexile level. We noted that there are some students in the class that are reading at a fifth grade level or a fourth grade level, and this text would be appropriate for those students. Some other examples are ocean food chains, 800 Lexile level, as well as river food chains at an 820 Lexile level. Now these are our students who have maybe the lower reading levels or lower ability levels in the classroom and we want to make sure that they have supplementary text to support um, the content or content knowledge. However, we do have students that are performing at a higher level in the classroom. So we, we pulled in some other supplementary text as well for those students. 1040 Lexile for rainforest food chains, past the energy, 1020 Lexile, and an ocean food chain, 1220. So a 1220, 1220 Lexile correlates to about 11th, 11th grade or 12th grade uh, Lexile level. Some other supplementary materials that we may bring in uh, for students, uh, manipulative such as ETA uh, that students are exposed to at the middle school level, as well as the interactive life science textbook uh, for those students who are reading at a seventh grade level. Um, they, this textbook or the interactive textbook would be helpful for those students um, to, to get a simplified version of the content information. And then the last component that we want to consider in planning and preparing for our students is the teaching and pedagogy. How will this lesson be delivered to the students? And then how will we model this information to the students in presenting this, uh, the content to the students for this lesson? So during this portion of the lesson, or the lesson I'm about to present to you, we'll, we'll highlight direct explanation as well as the modeling stages. But we want to make sure that we emphasize the explicit vocabulary instruction in these stages as well as interactive note taking. So the students will be exposed uh, to a variety of vocabulary during this stage of instruction. And we want to, all students, regardless of their reading levels, will be exposed to the same terminology. So we want to make sure that we hone in on the various uh, morphemes of these words or units 
sense of meaning of these words as we explain these uh, concepts or vocabulary terms to the students. For example, in the term herbivores, we see that the Latin roots of this word herba means vegeta vegetation, and carnivore, carne means flesh, omnivore, omni means all. So as a teacher, goes through each of these vocabulary terms with the students. We want to make sure that they have an interactive note page or, or they engage in interactive note taking during this, this stage so that the students become familiar with the words, become familiar with writing the terms and associate that writing with the meaning of these terms that they see. Also in science, they'll be exposed to various lab investigations that where they'll encounter these words in different settings and lab situations. So that means that they have to be able to apply what they've learned in terms of terminology to new situations and lab experiences. Today we're going to focus on the interdependence of life, specifically food chains. In some of our earlier discussions, we talked about ecosystem and how the ecosystem is a collection of organisms in their non-living environment. So today we're going to focus on the components of a food chain and the organisms that are included in various food chains. Our learning target for today's class centers around uh, food chains and their components, as well as organizing um, the components of a food chain. Uh, Ms. Henry, would you read the first learning target for the class, please? Identify the organisms in a food chain as a producer, consumer, decomposer, carnivore, omnivore or herbivore. All right. So today we'll become familiar with all of this terminology and be able to identify the components of a food chain using these terms. Um, Dr. Lee, would you read the second learning target, please? Arrange organisms from the lowest link to the highest link in the food chain, primary consumer, secondary consumer, tertiary consumer, or quaternary consumer. All right. So in addition to identifying these components of a food chain, we will also identify the latter components of a food chain, primary consumer, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary consumers in each of these food chains. So why is this important? Um, all organisms require energy. Everything in the world requires energy. And as human beings, we acquire energy from eating and consuming plants and animals. And because many animals engage in this process to obtain energy, these can be organized as chains in which energy is transferred from one organism to the next. And this label is called a food chain. A food chain is basically a diagram that illustrates how energy is transferred from one organism to the next. So your assessment for today will be to identify the organisms in the food chain as a producer, consumer, decomposer, herbivore, carnivore, or omnivore, and then additionally, you will be able to make a list of organisms and arrange them from the lowest link in a food chain to the highest link in the food chain as a primary consumer, secondary, tertiary, or quaternary consumer. This is an example of a food chain, um, the food chains you will be exposed to today. And as you can see in this food chain, we've identified those components, primary consumer, producer, secondary consumer, tertiary consumer, as well as decomposer. In addition to these terms, you'll be labeling the herbivores as well as the carnivores that are, in the, that are parts of a food chain. As we move through the terminology today, I'd like for you to jot down the new terminology that we go over on your interactive note page. So we'll be jotting down new terms that we haven't been exposed to and a couple of terms that we've been exposed to in previous class sessions. For example, ecosystem, we have mentioned this in some of our prior class sessions, and we said that an ecosystem was a community of organisms and their non-living environment. Repeat that term after me, please, ecosystem. Ecosystem. Producers, repeat that term after me, please. Producer. Producers. Producers are organisms that use energy from sunlight to make their own food. So producers engage in the process of photosynthesis. And we spoke about photosynthesis in our earlier class periods. Repeat this term, please. Photosynthesis. Photosynthesis. And so we know in the process of photosynthesis that plants take in water, sunlight, as well as carbon dioxide as their reactants, and then produce oxygen as well as glucose, or sugar, in the products of this photosynthesis process. A consumer, repeat that term please, consumer. Consumer. 
cannot make their own food. They need to eat other organisms to obtain energy and nutrients. And so as we can see, there are various types of consumers. Consumers cannot make their own food. So for example, consumers can be classified into three groups. The first is a herbivore. A herbivore is a consumer that only eats plants. Repeat this term with me, please. Herbivore. Herbivore. The term uh, herbivore comes from, or herba comes from, um, the meaning of herba means vegetation. Carnivore is a consumer that eats other animals. So carne, the affix carne means flesh. And if we move on to the term omnivore, Omnivore is a consumer that eats both plants and animals. Repeat these two terms with me, please. Carnivore. Carnivore. Omnivore. Omnivore. The affix omni means all, and carne means flesh. And also in each of these terms, you have the Latin root vorere, which also means to swallow, and it's included in each of these terms. This is an example of a food chain. And in this food chain, we have various components, additional components as well. The first is primary consumer. Repeat that term with me, primary consumer. Primary consumer. A primary consumer is an organism that gets its energy from eating or consuming vegetation. In this example, we see the grasshopper consumes grass, and it is labeled as a primary consumer. The secondary consumer, repeat that term with me, please, secondary consumer. Secondary consumer is an organism that eats the primary consumer. So we see in this example that the snake is the organism that consumes the grasshopper and is labeled the secondary consumer. The third consumer in this food chain is a tertiary consumer. Repeat that term with me, please. Tertiary consumer. Tertiary consumer. A tertiary consumer feeds on secondary consumers. So tertiary meaning third feeds on the secondary consumer in this food chain. The last term or the last organism in this food chain is a quaternary consumer. Repeat that term with me please. Quaternary consumer. Quaternary consumers or organisms that eat the tertiary consumer. It is the fourth consumer in the food chain. So you can see from this example, we start with the plant as the primary producer, the herbivore in this example, the grasshopper is a primary consumer, the mouse is the carnivore which consumes, the herbivore is our secondary consumer, the tertiary consumer is the snake which consumes our secondary consumer, and then the last or the coordinary consumer is the fourth organism in the food chain which consumes the snake. Decomposers are another component of food chains. Repeat that term with me please, decomposer. Decomposers. Decomposers recycle, recycle nitro, natural resources and they produce byproducts, carbon dioxide and other nutrients that can be used by other organisms. For example, decomposers that produce carbon dioxide, this carbon dioxide gas can be used by plants in the process of photosynthesis. Many bacteria and fungi are decomposers. This is another example of a food chain, and we see that decomposers are included in this food chain, the fungi, and they recycle nature's resources. They get their energy by breaking down dead organisms. These materials, such as carbon dioxide, like I mentioned, can be used in other processes, such as photosynthesis, and we see an example of bacteria or fungi here as a decomposer, but bacteria also can be considered decomposers as well. So I'm going to model for you the components, how to label the components of a food chain. We see that there are already parts of a food chain labeled here, and I want you to follow along in your interactive note page, and I want you to label the terminology as I go through it with you. The producer in this food chain is our plant, and it's already, or the flower, which is labeled producer, we have our primary consumer, which is our caterpillar in this example. So we've labeled our caterpillar as our primary consumer, but we also label our grasshopper or caterpillar as our herbivore. A herbivore, again, as you remember, is an organism 
that consumes only plants. Our secondary consumer in this food chain is the frog. This is our secondary consumer because it consumes the caterpillar. This is an organism that consumes our primary consumer. And it is also labeled a carnivore because it consumes another organism. Our tertiary consumer in this example is our snake. It is a consumer because it, can, it consumes energy or gets energy from another organism and is third in the food chain, but it is also labeled as a carnivore. And our quaternary consumer is the owl, which is already labeled as a consumer, but it is also a carnivore as well. I give you a few moments to complete your food chain. Now all food chains will not be arranged in this, in this order or organized in this fashion. So what I wanted you to get accustomed to was looking at organisms, random organisms, and then organizing them in a food chain yourselves. So these are some examples of various organisms, and we know that that, our, that the, this whole process starts with the sun, in terms of that, the process of photosynthesis. So we wanted to include this component in our food chain as well. So I'm gonna model for you how to identify the various components of this food chain, starting with the sun, because we know the sun plays a, the primary role in, in the process of photosynthesis. So the sun provides the energy for this process. If we take a look at this diagram, the plants utilize the energy from the sun in the process of photosynthesis. So we've labeled our plant as the producer. So you want to label this plant as our producer in the food chain. The second, second or the primary consumer in this food chain would be the organism that consumes the plant. So we see that I've, I would identify the grasshopper as our primary consumer or herbivore in this food chain because the grasshopper would consume the plant. So it is labeled a primary consumer, but it is also labeled a herbivore. The second component of our food chain or the secondary consumer would be our frog. This is our secondary consumer but it is also labeled a carnivore because it consumes or gets, requires energy from a primary consumer. The next component, I would identify the snake as our tertiary consumer because it can consume the frog, the tertiary consumer, meaning it is third in the food chain and it also consumes the frog, meaning it is a carnivore. And the last component of our food chain would be the quaternary consumer, meaning that it is fourth in the food chain and it is also a carnivore. So here we've identified the, the, in, the components of our food chain that were arranged in random order but we wanted to be able to identify the various components, carnivores, herbivores, as well as producers and consumers within this food chain.